second first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and today a very normal conversation about golf. Joining me to break it all down, Patrick McDonald is here. Patrick, good day. Good day, fellas. Uh, good to see you guys. The Unorthodox Wednesday episode uh, has got me a little jazzed up. <laughs> How do you usually spend your Wednesdays? <laughs> uh, you don't want to know, man. Yeah. That's between me and that's between me and God. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't really want to know. <laughs> when Patrick tells you you don't want to know. You trust him on that. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I've learned. Greg Ducharme is here. Hello, Greg. Hello, boys. Uh, excited about today's episode, uh, about the topic today anyway. Really looking forward to getting into that. So other than that, uh, not much on the plate. Been a little bit of a whirlwind in the game of golf. I'm sure some of these conversations will come up, but uh, excited to be back with, with the boys. Yeah, we're going to have a little fun today. Kyle Porter is here, the man of the hour, the author of Normal Sport 3, which is now available in, KP, correct me here if I get anything wrong, a digital copy, that's your PDF, a uh, audio book, and also a paperback. Those are the three options, correct? That's correct. You can also buy previous editions, uh, the the PDFs of, of previous editions. This is the shortest one we've done, uh, which is something that we can talk about a little bit. But uh, yeah, anormalsport.com. Pick it up, read it, listen to it. However you, whatever you want to do to it, you're you're free to do to it. Yeah, very very well. Burn it, that. burn it, whatever. I'm sure there's some live bots that would like to burn it. As long as they pay for it, they can do whatever they want with it, right? That's great, burn, burn, burn the books, baby. Sweet. Uh, the very consumable normal normal sport three looks a little bit different than other editions but kp let's back this up a little bit i mean the idea that you took a twitter joke a yeah. twitter you know thing bit. and yeah a bit and turns it into not one not two but three different books uh lebron james style pretty pretty unfathomable but here we are <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. You know, it's it's uh, every time I thought it was just going to like peter out. It just I it, it, I was thinking about this recently, Rick, like the idea of golf in general that we just took over these sheep fields and like goat fields for our, for like our sport is just like the even the the origin of it is is like ridiculous right and so it's almost like just part of the fabric of the sport and so it just kind of keeps on going you know like it's just part of like the whole deal and i know that you know people tweet at me like normal sport moments from other sports like baseball or college football or whatever which is hilarious and it's like yeah that's those are that's cool but like it's not what like golf is like the the original normal sport back in the 1400s when we said yeah these sheep that were grazing here, you guys can move along because we're going to hit a ball around this field, right? Like, that's absurd. And uh, now it's turned into to three books that I've written. Yeah, it's 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 really awesome. And the thing that I, you know, I was just watching golf today and they were showing the PGA Championship highlights. And uh, it was when Corey Connors drilled it into the, the lip of that bunker on... <laughs> 16 and no one knew where it was and then nine people were kneeling down looking around and my <laughs> wife goes like what are they doing i'm like you you don't even want to know like there's just totally something normal normal going on here it's don't don't worry about it yeah and you get how many of those every week you know i one of the funny things about the whole bit is that i don't it's kind of crowdsourced now like people will just i don't even have to look for it people will just every time there's something like on the Asian tour, or European tour, while I'm asleep, I'll wake up to 10 tweets about like, here's so-and-so moving a tree out of the forest in, you know, Taiwan so that he can, so that he can pitch out and you've got you, just stuff like that all the time. So it's been fun to see people kind of catch on to it and uh, yeah. And write, write a couple of books about it. Hmm. Uh, Patrick, you are, you, you fire off, plenty of tweets you fire up uh, cbssports.com you've got the 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 keyboard underneath your fingers have you considered writing a book hmm. uh once or twice but i, I think uh, a question i did want to ask kyle was is there any like not hesitancy but 
uh just like going back and writing about stuff you have already written about like some like dread almost i want to say like oh i wrote about like like i i liked your piece about brooks kepka at the pga championship is there some dread like oh i don't know if i can write as good about brooks kepka the second time around or anything like that from from writer to writer yeah i think so and that was sort of why i did it a little bit differently this year i basically just went through because like when i was yeah the answer is yes like i when i when i started going back through everything i was like oh my gosh there's so much over the last year i i can't i can't go through every detail i can't i don't want to like quote myself a bunch so i tried to make it almost like a glorified twitter thread this year where i was just looking at old tweets from you guys from like stuff that i tweeted out and just trying to like build on that a little bit and i think that made it less like I, I dreaded that part of it less because I'm not trying to write when I write the book, I'm not trying to write the the piece in it that will go viral because it was like super emotional and like I was wrapped up in it. I'm really trying to be like punchy and like quick go getting through it. That, that there's still like some deeper stuff in there, but that's I don't know. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but that's sort of the way that I viewed it. What would you write a book about, Patrick? I don't know. I think I kind of want to do like a children's book, just like slowly. First, I probably need a, a child um, to know kind of the market a little more because I'm not going to read those by myself. But uh, that'd be weird. I think, I think kind of just easing my way into it with uh, some sort of animation fiction would be uh, the way to I would attack it. When you say children, do you mean like uh, like a book that? Because this is something that I've thought about. Is it? Is it? a book that a parent would read to their kids or a book that when your kid's old enough, they could read. Like, did you guys read Matt Christopher books growing up? No, nobody. I, no. I, read, I read goosebumps. Yeah. Kind of the same. Yeah. Same era, but yeah. sports. Yeah. It'd be like, I, I think the age, like five to eight, six to eight, kind of not like you're reading it to, to a baby, but people like children when they can read. So oh, like yeah. when they when they get to a reading age, writing it for them. Correct. Okay. Are are you Greg? Your your two boys. Uh, are you? Where are they at? Are they reading? Your oldest might be reading, right? Or are you still reading to them? Still reading to them. Okay. Every night. Um, my oldest is in kindergarten. Oh, okay. So he's learning how to read, Got it. picking out words, and all that stuff, which blows me away that he even can. You know, every time he picks something out or. You know, this is the th they have they're three years apart. So reading books for them, they're at very different ages. And my youngest will get really distracted if we read a book that doesn't have a lot of pictures in it. Me too. But when it, right, <laughs> it's one of the beauties of normal sport three. Yeah, that's pictures. why that's why I illustrated it. It was for Rick. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is when I read books that my two year old can enjoy. My oldest can read a lot of the pages, which is really, which is kind of shocking to see because he's still so young in my eyes, but he all of a sudden is reading a page on command, like mm -hmm. sounding out where it's just, it's a wild ride. So I like the idea of children's books, Patrick, but, uh, I, and it seems like it'd be an easy thing to do, but I, something tells me it wouldn't be. <laughs> okay. Well, w now that we're talking about children. Uh, no dumb questions on this podcast. Safe what uh, what's like the typical timeline for them? Like their milestones? I have no idea. Like when do they walk? When do they uh, you know, wipe their butt for the first time? When do they start reading? Stuff like that. I have no yeah, idea. The three most important: walking, reading, wiping your butt. Yeah, I think walking is usually between one and two years of age, right, Greg? Yeah, me. Some kids are a little earlier. Both my boys were right around, like almost. Uh, uh right on a year yeah okay greg <laughs> <laughs> yeah what a flex greg okay buddy well we're, well for me i took my first steps a little earlier than well that. by <laughs> by by one you were backing people down in nerf basketball so we know yeah, that. my fadeaways were i was learning my fadeaways back then i sapphire was already dialed at like 15 <laughs> months uh wipe your butt is like uh between four and five probably I'll let you know when I get there. 
Oh. Okay. <laughs> like personally or for your... <laughs> <laughs> And then what was the last one? Reading is kind of all over the map. Like it, it, it can be, I mean, four to whenever, right? Like uh, it, it or three four maybe. I yeah. I mean, it's that one has the, I think the widest variance there. What else you got, oh, yeah. Patrick? You guys, do you guys remember Hooked on Phonics? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. That's how I learned to read. Was oh, it? really? Yeah. I Hook. remember the commercials for it. Hooked on Phonics worked for me. That's the commercial. Do you remember Never. like uh, Mavis Beacon teaches typing or yeah. where in the world is Carmen San Diego? You're probably too young yeah. for this, Patrick. Patrick, this is this is way out of Patrick's age now. Yeah. Age range. Anyway, I Patrick, your idea is good because I think there's such a uh, there's such an opportunity for I've thought about this a lot. There's such an opportunity to get to introduce kids that are my kids and Greg's kids ages into golf. Like there's no there's no there's not a great on ramp for them, honestly. Like you can't just I guess you could have them listen to the first cat podcast because it's pretty clean, but they wouldn't understand it. Right. Like they wouldn't get what we were talking about and and i think that there's not there's not enough out there to get them into as a bridge between like knowing nothing and listening to the first guy podcast it, it starts with go to the range with your dad go to the right. golf course with your dad drive the cart which is a very old school kind of way of doing things and, and you know comparatively if like my wife ran a book fair this year at my son's school. And so I was over there looking at the books. There's a ton of kids, basketball books, Michael Jordan, comic books, uh, football, Tom Brady books, mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick book, like all kinds of sports books, but none for golf. Yeah. So maybe we just found a niche. Riches and niches. That is very true. Um, the normal sport three, I'll get us back on. I'll get us back on track here. Um, that's quite all right. That was a good, good uh, path to go down. Uh, KP, I keep using the word consumable because this does not look like one and two. One and two had dedicated chapters, whether it was John Rahm, whether it was a specific event or a major championship, the Ryder Cup, whatever that might be. This is literally just 250 plus thoughts. And yeah. some of them with um, appendix, right? Some of them with stats. Some of them are just a few sentences. And I find it, uh, I find it a lot easier to be like, okay, I've read twenty five. I'm going to put this down, and I know when I pick this back up tomorrow, I know exactly where I'm going to start off. Yeah, I tried to write. I got to. I got to credit Jason Page who illustrated the book because whenever I went to him in October and I was like, "Man, I feel," or September maybe. I, I was like, "I feel overwhelmed thinking about kind of what Patrick brought up, which is like going through every single thing that happened over the last ten months and rewriting it, or not rewriting, but like writing a, basically documenting it." And he was like, "Well, just write down your thoughts." And so I tried to almost make it Rick, like you know how we're at tournaments together and we just get each other's kind of unfiltered thoughts, takes opinions for like five straight days. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I, it's not as unfiltered, but I, that's kind of what I tried to make it feel like as I, as I wrote those thoughts down. So I'm, I'm glad it comes across like that. Cause that was very much my intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is like this weird thing that goes on at events when you're there for 12 hours and five straight days and everybody's throwing out everything and some things get, you know, dove into and some get laughed at and it's, it's kind of a, a, a weird process. I want to kind of just pick out a couple of these because I'm not, I don't want to give this away for free. Go open your, go open your wallets for this. But the, the, the most incredible moment to me of the year um, is, Six. well, is pointed out in number 90, which number is 90. As, that was masters or right before it was masters. Okay. And refers to the tree falling on 17. Uh -huh. And Kyle makes a point here, going back and watching every angle, um, how disastrous it could have been and how big of a story it could have been. And to me, Patrick, kind of before we get KP's thoughts on this, and Greg, I'd love to hear your thoughts too. The idea that something that never, like a tree falling on a golf course, we don't see that. Um, to see it at a major event with tens of thousands of people 
not only does no one get hurt, but also they have it cleaned up. I've never seen so many chainsaws in 15 minutes. They had this thing cleaned up almost immediately. That could have really been disastrous. And I feel like it is story number 10,000 of the year. Oh, oh people like multiple people could have said sayonara, bury me around Amen Corner. And the fact that no one was even injured, even touched is crazy. I mean, look at the bottom of that bad boy. That is massive. That is a huge tree. And honestly, spoiler, Rick, I totally forgot about this. I'm not at 90 yet, but <laughs> and, but it, it was pretty funny. Like on the internet that day, people kind of putting on their detective cap, going through the Getty images, going through various like really grainy videos from like master.com cameras and, and stuff like that to piece everything together. And the fact that one, no one got hurt Two, they're able to clean that up so quickly is just like really Augusta national to a T it seems like. Uh, and, and yeah, it, it is a, I mean, a bizarre moment from what was kind of a bizarre weekend at the masters too. You know, the, uh, the other thing about this that struck me and by the way, Patrick, you just mentioned, I had for completely forgotten about this. This is the beauty of the, the entire book. Yes. I mean, there are things from, well, let's see. Um, like fake Scott Stallings. Yeah. It's the first note I made when I was reading. The Scott Stallings thing was, and what thought was that, Kyle? Like three? Like four. Yeah, it was early. It was right it was away. 10, yeah. Um, so there are so many of those where I, I can't believe that happened. Uh, and then when it comes to this one here at Augusta, this is a the most famous golf course in the world with the most famous trees of of any golf course in the world. I mean, they talk about it every year, how trees are added and trees are planted and trees like this size are brought in and added. And to have one of them fall, in, fall down on TV is unimaginable. And then you add in that nobody is nobody is injured and it it was basically the reason we forget about it is because it was a no factor yeah well yeah that that was sort of my point in there is it could have obviously been it could have been bad and i think what's really weird and this is part of the reason i write the book is is this happens at this happens every week but it especially happens at majors is so many things take place that you just move right past because you got to get to the i mean you don't have to but you, you, you get to the next thing and you're like, you, once you go back and this is what like, I, I have a love hate relationship with Twitter, Rick. <laughs> I love it as a repository for ideas, thoughts, takes like remembering things. It's just very easy to search to be like, Oh yeah. Fake Scott Stallings. That was crazy that somebody who's not Scott Stallings got Scott Stallings master's invite in the mail. That is a, that's like the definition of normal sport. When would a normal like banker, plumber, electrician ever be invited to the NBA finals, right? Like that's outrageous. And yet this guy that lives, I think he lived in Augusta, was invited to play in the Masters. <laughs> now, <laughs> he didn't he didn't get to because he wasn't actually the Scott Stallings that he was referring to, but uh just stuff like that is is um is a great like thing to i think anti Fado said that the book is like it's great for remembering oh yeah that didn't that happen before COVID? oh no that happened in august like three <laughs> months ago <laughs> <laughs> which i thought was a hilarious way to look at it yeah that's that's the real beauty of this is being able to remember all of the things that were might have been in your brain for a minute or a month but here they are all in a book are you kp throughout this process you know, is there an an active idea of remembering things throughout the year? Or are you trying to get to the end of the year, look back and say, these are the 250 most important thoughts that I had? Or are you seeing something in March and saying, oh, that's definitely going to be in the book? Well, there was a moment at the U.S. Open this year. Remember when um, Cam Young hit a ball in a golf cart uh, cut ball holder or ball like little thing in the golf yes. cart? I do. Mm -hmm. I remember tweeting like this is going to be a whole chapter in normal sport three kind of joking it and it turned out to be just one thought because we didn't do chapters. But 
there are moments throughout the year that you're like, well, that's going to be in the book, but I don't act. I I'm trying to act. I'm, I'm actively trying to not think about that because I think it, it takes away from like the present coverage of it. Um, I want to be like present in the moment, like talking about what's going on in the here and now, and then retroactively. And this is part of why I do it at the end of the year is because you can look back and say, Oh, well that thing that I thought was important, it turned out to not really matter that much at all. Right. And so you can kind of pick and choose like, Oh, these things actually did matter. Or this was even more Phil finishing second at the masters is even more ridiculous in retrospect than it was in the moment. And we thought it was crazy in the moment because Phil sucked in 2023. And yet he finished what four back of the masters champion, which is completely crazy. So yeah, I, I like not considering it until we get to September, October, because I think that makes for a, a, a better, like, retrospective experience. Yeah. Well, you have more information, right? I mean, you totally. have these guys yes. that, um, yeah, something that, especially in, in years like this, something that someone might have said in February might have been completely different than what actually happens in July, August, and, and September. And um, if you spend a lot of time and energy on something, earlier in the year it might have been wrong it might have been a waste of time it might have been yeah it is interesting that it's actually better to look back on it i want to go around the room i'll give you guys a second to think about this i'll i'll vamp with my own thought on it but just everybody's favorite normal sport moment that they remember from the year just one the first one that comes to mind i think mine is probably uh there's so many of them and like june 6 was probably the most like meaningful one but the most ridiculous one or one of the most ridiculous ones was phil mickelson selling capes at one point like hawking capes at a golf tournament and talking earnestly about the benefits of them how kids all over the world are going to wear them and i think that <laughs> phil is he's become a little bit of a cartoon character but like people just kind of ate it up like people on the live side kind of ate it up people on the not live side were like this is among the ridiculous things he's done this might be the most ridiculous that one is up there for me like phil selling capes or trying to like promote capes at a live golf event uh, uh go ahead greg all right i'm ready so i got two in mind one i didn't remember until i read the book and this is another live guy, but Patrick Reed using binoculars to look <laughs> up into a tree. Because <laughs> I, I had completely forgotten about it. And reading that in and the image in that one, you got to see that. It's fantastic. And then the second one, which kind of came to life in the last couple of weeks for me, was the uh, was the St. Andrews renovation of the, the bridge <laughs> oh, wow. and, and everybody's that. reaction to it okay right? i mean th this is not a uh, thing against saint andrews but the reaction to the golf <laughs> that the golf world had to this was so normal they, they, they were they were bullied into into changing it back yes so so if you just wanted a patio that, if 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 250 years ago or even how old's twitter even 20 years ago if they had done that 20 years ago, it would now have probably lived for another 500 years. Yeah. And that would have been the Swolken Bridge that everybody knows and loves. Right? But instead, it, instead, you got glued activator and antifado bullying the royal and ancient into, into oh. removing this rock formation. Do you, think, do you think they hired, do you think the same people that they hired to patio it had to come unpatio it? <laughs> mm. Yes. Because they have to make a phone call that says, "Hey guys, you did a great job. You did. Have exactly you been? On, we have you been on Twitter? Well, you did exactly what you asked. What we asked of you. But like four days later, I'm gonna need you to come and take this out. It, 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 Edit, undo, or yeah, exactly. Control Y or <laughs> Option Y, whatever. Uh, Josh, producer Josh has a has a photo of, of it up on YouTube right now. It doesn't actually look that bad. I think. It looks um, nice. It, but, but touching something that's like hundreds of years old like that is in in, in the moment it felt it would be like the golf uh architect equivalent of being like yeah we're gonna like tear down 12 at augusta and just kind of redo it just right. like reshape it see what happens right. you're like yeah i don't know that's a great idea but at, at the same time 
this is why golf's the original normal sport. Because yeah. if you took the bench of an NFL game, right, and did some, you know, made it, uh, made the benches the tunnel decker, <laughs> made them a tunnel, put dugouts on an NFL stadium, <laughs> or put, uh, put yeah, baseball. These are, all, these are all great ideas, by the way. Yeah, I've had to. <laughs> like if you if you took the dugout in baseball and put it above ground and just had a normal bench, would people have this kind of reaction? No. No, no this way. Was, that's what I'm saying. That's it's exactly not part of the course. Yeah, that's the definition of like, you know what used to be where that patio is, Greg? bunch of bunch of sheep taking dumps right there. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the that was what used to be there, and nobody nobody said anything about it. And then we started playing golf there, and all of a sudden you can't put put a bunch of stones down. It was it was absurd. I, I feel bad for the you know the the guy who fired off the tweet like i took this beautiful photo i've got everything in frame people are gonna yeah. love this i'm gonna announce this it's gonna be awesome and just instant <laughs> that did not what go well have <laughs> you <laughs> just completely on brand for greg to bring that back up of course you know I forgot about it. yeah <laughs> yeah well it, it, it's why it, one of the reasons why it struck me it, it really struck a chord with me greg's i'll war put it to you this man. way this was not its original design <laughs> no yeah. that's true that's correct uh patrick do you have one from uh this year uh i have two and you brought up tweeting uh i, I think a tweet from someone in, in this room was a normal sport moment yeah i'm looking at you rick uh riviera oh. tiger tiger woods Justin Thomas has returned to competition and Tiger Woods has a thought to, you know, bring a woman's product in his golf bag just in case he outdrives Justin Thomas. Uh, I, absurd. I I actually wrote about this in the book and I turned it into a compliment to Rick, which I don't know if, if any of y'all have read it yet, but uh, I, we've talked about this on here. It was such a, cr I, I, Rick, uh, Rick asked me like, should I, is, can I send it? And I was like, I, yeah, I think it's okay. And then I, and then I, and then I wouldn't retweet. Yeah, he would not <laughs> retweet it. I kept texting him like, "What? Retweet it? You said it was yeah. okay. You said I'd be fine with this. I thought that meant I had your immediate retweet. It's okay but for I, you to tweet that. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it looks good. It looks good on you. Uh, I was like, you need to turn your phone off because it's about to get crazy. But the compliment to Rick was, uh he does a great job of being that photo was available for anybody to find and tweet out on getty he does a great job of being very thorough with everything that he uh the, with everything that he does and i think that that is such a lesson to the 21 year old that's in sports media at boston college or clemson or M miami or wherever is like hey just because you have a big following and and like a good job doesn't mean you shouldn't continue to be super, super thorough and comb through every uh, interview, every transcript, every photo to find stuff that matters. That's a dumb example because I didn't. I mean, matter. it was it was it was ridiculous, but it I thought it was emblematic of this um, this bigger thing, which I think Rick is very good at. Well, thank you. The thing that I I Patrick that I go back to that a lot where you know, Tiger Woods hasn't played in nine months or whatever it was at the time. He announces the week before why, while we're at Phoenix that he's going to play Riviera. I imagine him getting the bag ready, throwing his, you know, bridge stones in there making sure he's got the right shoes and going, <laughs> looking at the, Oh, I got, I got JT on, you know, Thursday and Friday. Okay. Let me go find, um, let me go find something for him. And, and my wife's like, they have not made like that style of tampon in like 20 years. So he has that he has found, he has like dug up some like old, uh, like where does Tiger Woods even go to find this? I just think the whole yeah, thing. So you're is, saying he didn't go to CVS. And no, he didn't like up. buy a new box or anything. Right. Like it, well, it is just so there's so many. And then he finally nine holes in finally gets his moment to pull the trigger on out driving JT and he, and he goes for it. Like the whole you, thing's insane. Yeah, you start to unwind that and and it makes even less sense than it did. And it's just, you know, I part of me is like, well, yeah, you, this is the kind of humor that Tiger engages in. Like, what 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 did you expect there? Um, so yeah, I definitely what was your other one, Patrick? 
Uh, well, I actually just thought of another. So oh, one, great. one would be That's uh, the point of the show. <laughs> the, the U.S. Open, just the Playboy Mansion, wa- watching it on TV, and guys are hitting drives, and there's just like monkeys in the background and yep. birds just right across the fence, and then just feral animals all over. Yeah. The place. <laughs> and then uh, no fans, though. Of course, don't get me started on LACC. I'll go on a Greg Vendetta type rant. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the the next one is, is Tom Kim at Oak Hill. Yeah, go go in <laughs> just full mud boy mode, taking it off, finishing the round. It, that that uh, that was probably the top of the year for me. Yeah, that's in the book. That got its own illustration, got its own thought. Uh, that I, was that was great. I, I want to talk about the illustrations in a second, but the one that I have, and I'm not even sure it made it into the book, KP, because it was it was kind of personal. I was just trying to do a control F and 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 find it, but. When we were at Phoenix and we had our setup on the back of the range with those two porta <laughs> is this in the book? No, but okay. you can tell it. Okay, so we're we're our stage that we have for CBS Sports is on the back of the range. Um, there's two porta potties that are inside the ropes. They're supposed to be for like players or like crew or whatever. And we are sitting there. No, I don't know what it was. It was Friday or Saturday. I think it was Saturday. It must have been Saturday because the, co- yeah. the conversation was how far back is too far back, right? I mean, Scheffler's kind of putting the heat on. Rom's putting the heat on. Like how far back is too far back? And as this conversation, like literally in the middle of this conversation, Rory McIlroy ducks his head underneath like our set and goes, can I use that bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, sure rory mcelroy right like, uh, sure it's available it's open right like because it runs parallel to like 14 or whatever and then on his way out kyle says rory we're talking about how far back is too far back in the middle of his round kyle says we're talking yeah about- he's on like the 11th hole or whatever yeah 11 how far back is too far back and without missing a beat rory goes not eight <laughs> Because he was eight shots back at the moment. Yeah, so, was Roy, like... so Roy McIlroy <laughs> knew exactly how far off the lead was. He knew that that was not too far back. And he was able to come up with that on an on-the-spot post-bathroom break interview by Kyle. Yeah, which is like, which is like, when would that ever happen in a in a NFL game? It wouldn't. It just wouldn't, right? Uh, in the middle of competition, LeBron James... Uh, you go up to LeBron and say, "Hey, you guys are you, you guys are down twelve with with six to go. You, you think you can still come back?" And While he's, he's like, like oh. right after he goes to the bathroom, as he's right. walking back to the court from the bathroom, right. like it, 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 it's just. So, but stuff like that happens all the time, right? Like there 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 was a quote or there was a thought in the book that was, and I remember where we were standing, Rick, at the Phoenix Open, me, you, and and Joe Musso, and I said, "Oh." I said this out loud to you guys. I said, the Phoenix Open is what Liv thinks it is. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were standing there and I said it and and Joe was like, got to tweet it. And that (laughs) ended up as a thought in this book. And, and I don't know, like, I think, I think being together at events like that, sorry, Patrick, we're making you jealous, but being together at events like that engenders a lot of like interesting dialogue and, and friction, not bad friction, but like good friction of like, uh, that, that results in like fun and interesting takes. Yeah. I love it. Um, these illustrations in here. Yeah. They are getting, in my opinion, uh, how do I, how do I phrase this? They're getting like deeper. Yeah. Like you have to know more to get them. It's like the sicker you are, the more (laughs) you like them. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Uh, that and that I don't really touch those. Like Jason Page is the illustrator. He does work for a lot of different independent independent golf media companies, including Fried Egg and No Line Up. He he basically runs the the underground independent golf media illustration uh, business. But he he, it's kind of and he's done this in the newsletter too. It's kind of his own interpretation. The way that I interpret the seat or like a, a moment or the season through my words, he does it with his photos. And so, while what he illustrates might be something I wrote in the book, it also might not be. Like it's just the way that he sort of interpreted what was happening. My favorite one is actually on page one nineteen. 
and it's of the the gentleman that was hitting golf balls in the riverbed next to the open championship while it was happening uh just out by himself when i think those are windmills in the background mm -hmm. and he's just pounding balls right next to brian Harmon shooting you know 67 at at uh at royal at hoy lake and the the illustration just says believe and it's like this kind of funny but also kind of serious look at how golf is something that like you you would never see somebody taking batting practice next to yankee stadium during the world series right <laughs> like that would be so weird and yet here we are with golf and uh he did a really good job of kind of conveying that that is so funny there was a porty a porta potty one too yeah oh yeah and i thought that's where you were going with the rory story rick i think this is the porta potty is this the spieth porta potty uh, I think it's the the fact that well, I have to ask which no, this is like, it is. this was a this was a take. Yeah, I think it's the ROM one from Riviera. Oh god, oh, that guy. The fact that the fact that there are multiple porta potties, this could be is, yeah. is got, a very yeah. normal thing. Yes. Is it the TIO take? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yes. it was. Yeah. A, it was. That's why I said that guy, John Rom, was the king of TIO. Oh yeah. I, yeah. By the way, uh, on the uh, oh, go ahead, Kyle. Well, I was gonna say is Kevin Van Valkenburg had this take that there should be one tournament a year where you don't get any TIO. You just play the ball wherever it is. <laughs> if it's behind a scoreboard, if it's behind a grandstand, sorry, play hit a better shot, play better. Um, on the ROM thing, it's very interesting, and I'm wonder. I'm I'm very curious to get your take on this, Kyle reading it now when things obviously come out after it's published and it's a very up-to-date book you're talking about a book from one year yeah um and all of a sudden everything seems to change overnight and uh, how is there any fear of that happening as you're as you're writing it like the does the perspective change or is it solely looking back at what happened and how you felt when it happened I think it's more so that, but also, you know, th think, think about how boring our Decembers usually are. Like I don't, right. I've not really in the past feared, this is a unique time in golf, but I've not really in the past ever feared like, oh, something's going to go down in December that's going to change everything. And so this is, this to me is like a one-off year for that. So it's not, it's not something that I will even factor in, in the future just because it was so bizarre, but it does. I tried to, I didn't go back through every ROM thing. Cause I was, I basically had to get it into the printer like three days before that. So I was like, whatever, I'm not going to touch it, but I'm sure there's a couple of things in there that not even ROM specific, but just the dynamics of the PGA tour and live that I would have written differently. If ROM, if I knew that ROM, if I, if I had written it, knowing that ROM had already gone, uh, but I don't I don't know that it really changes a ton as it relates to how I view him. I think I still mostly view him the, the same in terms of what I wrote in the book, because I didn't really write about right. his relationship with Liv in the book. Uh, going back to having to play every single shot as it as it lies, if you're if you're Cam Young, Patrick, and your ball goes into a <laughs> cup holder in a are you just are you out or do you have to take your golf club and smash the cup holder? to get the ball to come out and then you can proceed. I think the play would be to somehow get underneath it and kind of go pool shot through the bottom and pop. Yeah. Out. Right. Cause well, the, the cup holders have little, uh, little mm -hmm. holes in them for leakage and stuff. I think the right. question becomes, can you take an unplayable in this scenario? Uh, I, I mean, if you're, if the whole, if this whole one tournament is play the ball, at, no, well, what if you hit a ball in the middle of a lake? Is that okay. different than taking? Can, I guess that's if you can see it, you got to play it. Okay, okay. So you'd yeah. rather hit it in the middle of a lake than be in a cup holder for sure. <laughs> that would be sick. You know, they used to in the original. We've gone back into history quite a bit today. Uh, it, it, oh, it, back when golf was first invented, or somewhere around then, they used to have a club called a rut iron, and that was designed in case you hit your ball into a rut 
<laughs> which is in like the original 13 rules. You know, the what happened if your ball's in a rut, you got to play it as it lies. This is like a, you know, picture the edge of a garden or like a little drainage pipe that's unfinished going across a fairway. They had a I club love for that. I love it. I, I mean, that's it. That is crazy. We need to go back to a cup holder club. We need to go back to 13 rules, Greg. It's uh, the rules are an amazing thing on a couple fronts. One, you could you could go to 13 rules. And you could probably figure out a way to do that. But what amazes me about the rules is all of these situations, many of them normal sport moments that happen. There's a rule that covers it. I mean, it's I I have never seen a situation where we didn't know what to do. Yeah. Like there was no rule. Maybe it was applied wrong or, or it's the wrong rule or there was a bad call, but there's never been a situation where we we don't we don't know what to do. Well, that's the th- that, that's why I mean, it is a very normal sport thing that the golf rule book continues to expand. I would love to see some stats on how much it has expanded compared to other leagues rule books because you have all these like sub points like rule 27A, you know, C.6 Roman numeral yeah, like and it it applies to very specific things, uh, which is, yeah. The the don't get me started on that. Uh, Rick, in the one of the appendices, I did uh, strokes gain for the year. Mm-hmm. Did you know that I use data golf? Did you know that Scotty Scheffler led in strokes gain total, strokes gain tee to green, strokes gain ball striking, strokes gained off the tee, strokes gained approach, and was third in strokes gain around the green. <laughs> I'm not surprised. And he won twice. How's that possible? That's the sick part, man. It's, I do wonder if we are going to look back. There's either going to be a, like a hard correction where he wins five or six times this year, or we're going to look back and say, wow, what a missed opportunity. The fact that he was third in strokes gained around the green just like blew my mind. I mean, I mean, to be as good as he was from like with his ball striking and also be third in strokes gained around the green was just. Outrageous, Patrick. I did. I did something in here that I'm. I know you love, which is uh, the five. It's my all NBA team, but for golf, like the five guys that mattered. Uh, okay. Any, any. Do you have any um, qualms with these five? Scheffler, Hovland, Rory, Rom, Brooks. Scheffler, Victor, Rory, Rom, Brooks. I can give you my second team if you want. Well, hold on. Don't do that yet. My first inclination is Taylor Gooch. Sure. Um, Why not? My second one is. <laughs> now, nah, I think that that's probably right. In any order, correct? It's just yeah, like a starting yeah, yeah, five yeah. for yeah. an NBA it, team. Uh, yeah. The thing is, you you always have to think. Okay, if not one of these guys, who who is who is guy six that would take the spot? And I don't know if I have a sixth. I mean, I th- a couple of major what? winners, but. Homa and Clark, maybe. Homa, I had what I guess would be interesting. Second team was Harmon, Homa, Clark, Fleetwood, Fitzpatrick. Fleetwood had an unbelievable stat year and just never wins. There, I'm working on something now where he's like, it's crazy how good Fleetwood was, but didn't get anything done. And then my third team was actually Ludwig, Ricky, Cantlay, Morikawa, and Bryson. Okay. God, if Ludwig played like two more months, he would have been on the first team. I know, but I think <laughs> I, I thought I thought the five I thought the top five was was very clear cut. I mean, Brooks. I, was, yeah, I think I think you're right. Brooks yeah. was statistically the worst, but he won his fifth major. Like that's an easy inclusion. And the other four, it's like, yeah, I mean, those were kind of the guys, you know. Yeah, they yeah. were they were the big four. So they accounted for so those five accounted for seven, eleven, fourteen wins and two majors, and yeah. that's with Scotty only. Only getting two. Um, last thing, and we'll we'll get out of here. Uh, I want to circle back on this rut iron. So I was reading about this. <laughs> rut, this, this rut a sentence, a sentence has never been said. <laughs> a so literally four, a forerunner of the sand wedge. The rut iron was made for digging a ball out of cartwheel ruts. That is literally 
because horses and carts were used for maintenance. Not a golf cart. Right. So literally, so think about those thin, skinny, if your ball was in one of those, I'd be furious. That's way worse than a divot in a fair way. A, a cart wheel rut. Um, so, uh, these cart tracks are barely wider than a golf ball. The rut iron was a lofted specialty club designed to flip the ball out of a rut to safe ground. Then this, uh, article would go on to say how young Tom Morris loved his rut iron and he would swing sharply down with the lofted little cleek and Tommy launched high approaches that stopped or even backed up when they hit the green. So the rut, the rut iron king, young Tom Morris. <laughs> Rick, That's I can what, get you one on eBay for four hundred fifty bucks right now. You should do that in your in your Rick Run giveaways. Seems seems a bit steep for a <laughs> rut iron. Rick's like I've got three of them that I paid less for. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tough. Uh, if, it was, if it was used by young Tom Morris, I'm in. Yeah, for sure. I'll let you know. What are you gonna say, KP? I was going to say, can I read uh, one of the thoughts just to kind of end the. Yes, read it and then I'll go through um, all the info on where to get it, stuff like that. Cool. So this is number 224. We didn't even talk about the Ryder Cup. I have, I do a ton on the Ryder Cup, but this is right before the Ryder Cup. One of my favorite normal sport moments of the year also came at the Tour Championship when, because of weather delays, the event spilled into a Dallas Cowboys preseason game for me here in Dallas. They moved the Tour Championship to some other channel that was supposed to be carrying Jeopardy. And all I could think about was how many folks were going to flip on their evening viewing of Jeopardy, looking to be challenged and amused by knowledge around famous structural engineers or Hungarian monarchs from the Middle Ages. And instead, we're going to be greeted by a big Spanish man screaming expletives at a hole in the ground or a young Norwegian <laughs> dressed in fluorescent orange and moth. <laughs> moth. Like, what? It just... I, I don't know. I think I thought about this during the open championship when they did the waggle counter. I was like, what if somebody is getting on NBC or turning on NBC, trying to like watch meet the press and have their coffee. And they've got like, you know, Victor Hovland getting shat on by a bird. <laughs> I forgot about that. Too. And something called a waggle counter on their screen. <laughs> like, what would they be like? What, what is going on? Uh, the best sport, the most normal sport, normal sport three available on paperback, audiobook, your digital version past years. Listen, they age gracefully. You can <laughs> go read them again. A normal sport.com available now. KP, anything else? That I That's might it. I, I appreciate you guys. Dedicating a whole episode to this. I always enjoy talking about it. It's uh, it's a fun time of year. I hope people hope a ton of people read the book and uh, looking forward to more normal, normal sport moments, even this weekend. I'm sure we'll get one at the at the PNC. We get we get access to your normal brain all year round. And now the people <laughs> can have it uh, in a different form as well. Big thanks to producer Josh, who does all the hard work behind the scenes. Patrick McDonald, who is that real? You know, Sometimes you just got to grow up, Rick. Wow. Has changed wow. his Twitter handle? I have. Is this real or is this a troll? It's real. I have kept it under a, a new name, but the main account has changed to become more professional. It's like uh, you never want to grow up, but but you do. So I'm. It, it is now Pat McDonald CBS. Do you want us to call you Pat moving forward? No, dude. It's like the character limit on it. You, I couldn't even do like Patrick McDonald's the max 15. Someone already had it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you couldn't even do Patrick McDonald one. <laughs> no, I couldn't. not allowed. Uh, I'm coming for that trophy in your little handle there, by the way, Pat, did just, you, uh, just take it, man. Did Morale's you, low here. <laughs> did you save amateur status or can I go grab it? Oh, I saved it. Come on. Okay, good job. Yeah. Uh, I'm blocked by a lot of people. I told you this in Vegas. This is just okay. Pat so you're blocked McDonald. by a lot of people. Yes. Who who doesn't like Pat McDonald CBS? <laughs> <laughs> well, now they're gonna look at it and be like, "Why did I block Pat McDonald CBS?" And then it's gonna be like, "Boom, jokes on you." Yeah, <laughs> you know, love it. Call, call yes. the ambulance, but for you, chess baby. <laughs> and they're gonna unblock me. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it's going to go, but I, and then reblock. Oh, <laughs> yeah, definitely re 
what a what an ending uh threw me off off track here greg ducharme you better not change the real gfd greg or i'm in big trouble no i can't, can't do that can't unless, do that unless it's isofire i won't say never because i've learned my lesson from patrick just now but it's not in the <laughs> it's not in the plans not to mention john rom too uh, a week ago <laughs> yeah good point I, I, I mean i do have that account name too if we're you have John Rom. You have John yep. Rom PGA. I have John, I've, I've John Rom Live Golf. I've got. Do that you really in the chamber as well? If you could sell it. You could sell it to him. You Change seriously own that? Yeah. No. Are you being serious? Yeah. Swear to God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the name. The name is Johnny Rom on the uh, on the account. Is it at John Rom Live or at John Rom Live Golf? Live Golf. You should sell this to him. He, he you don't have an H official. in it, do you? No, no H. Didn't oh. Liv put out something with an H in it? The uh, the word search was that real? Was that a was that a? That's there me. It is. <laughs> Johnny Rom. Wow. <laughs> wow. There's All right, another another guy. burner. You have, Patrick has burner accounts. So that's what we just learned, dude. That oh. is funny. I've got like twelve more. <laughs> I he probably owns is some. You? On ours. Are you the one spreading all these rumors? Yeah, I'm replying to myself after like half of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Porter is available on Twitter at Kyle Porter CBS. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time.